Hi, I'm Ed Jacobs, founder of Impact Therapy, which is an active, creative, multi-sensory approach to counseling. I'm here with Heidi O'Toole, and she does a, just a great job of showing how Impact Therapy is, a, a, she makes the brain and neuropsychology come to life. And I think, well, you explain how it works. Well, here, it's... Impact therapy is a multi-sensory approach, and we know we, we process information through our five senses. So neuroscience and, and blending that into the counseling session is really, again, it's something to add to what it is we've currently been doing. The multi-sensory approach is so very effective, and now we're starting to understand the reason it's so effective is because we're integrating both the left and right side of the brain, and now we're also using vertical integration through the motor sensory part of the brain, which with movement, through the emotional part of the brain, the limbic system, and then the thinking brain, which is the, is the neocortex. Now, Heidi, I think you're going to... I'm going to role play a you, client? You role play a okay. client. Okay, and you're going to show what you teach a client? Yes. Because some of that might seem very complex, but Heidi does a wonderful job of making it simple and realistic. So I'll play a client that you've been seeing. That has issues both with trauma and addiction. Okay. And, and when we, we, you know, being in an addictive environment, growing up in an addictive home, having an addiction itself, being a partner of somebody with an addiction, that's traumatic in and of itself. But what we've usually seen is there's been trauma in, in the in the developmental stages or in relationships, and then that can be sometimes the precursor for and addiction. And not, not all addicts suffer trauma, no, but, but no. many. Many. It, it's a high correlation between trauma and addiction. Okay. And if we don't understand the brain piece to it, then we'll only be able to treat just part of the problem. And, and trauma is could be growing up in an alcoholic home. Absolutely. Where, so Absolutely. I'll play that role. Mm -hmm. That'll be a very, and, and, that's and a classic. And I also have a, a, an addiction Yeah, myself. then you too, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, let, let me show you what I believe is happening with you, Ed. And, and really this is... Because I don't understand why I do what I do. Exactly. And that makes sense And I want to stop. Sure you do. I, I know, I'm quite sure, as we've talked about, when you were a little guy, you didn't say, oh boy, I want to be a drug addict when I grow up. You know, you, that's one of the last things you wanted to be since you did grow up in an alcoholic home. So let me just show you something. Because what's happening to you is really, it's, it's, a, it's how your brain is responding to your world in order to survive. And it learned it a long time ago. So I'm going to show you this. And I think it might help you understand the reason you're doing what you're doing. Okay, this is your head, all right? Now, we, we process information through five senses, through sight, okay, smell, taste. Here's your ear down here, and I'll show you why I'm doing your ear down here. S sound and touch, okay? So we process information through our five senses. The information, when it gets processed, it goes into our brain. Now, let me show you this about our brain. It's pretty cool, all right? There's three parts to our brain. Okay, it's divided into three parts. Okay, so this is down here in the back of our brain. This is our doing brain. Okay, then the middle part of our brain is our feeling brain. And when you get real angry and okay. frustrated, okay, and then the upper part of our brain is the thinking brain. And this is where your confusion comes in. A lot of times you just react to your world, right? You mm -hmm. react then you get drunk or high because you don't want to feel the consequence of the reaction. Okay, And so this part of your brain then we don't have access to and that's why you stay confused. So when information, when it, it comes in through your brain, it always comes right here into this middle feeling brain. We in my business call it the limbic system. It comes in and the first place there's a part of the brain called the amygdala. I call it a stop sign. It doesn't really look like that, but I draw it as a stop sign. Because all information stops right there. And the very first, the very reason it does is to say, hey, is this dangerous information or is this not dangerous? Is this a threat to me or not a threat to me? Okay. The very next place it goes, all right, 
is what we call the hippocampus. Now this is, we have two of them because we have two sides of our brain, but I'm drawing this only in one dimension. This is what we call the loading dock. Hippocampus, very important, very important in coding memory. So I call it the loading dock because if the information isn't dangerous, it goes through the amygdala. The amygdala says go on through. The loading dock is going to need to get onto the loading dock in order to be stored. Or how else would we ever learn anything? Okay? Once the information is decided it's not dangerous and it's going to go through and be processed, it, the next part it comes to is what we call the thalamus. I call that the traffic cop. The thalamus is going to say, is the information going in this way or this way to be processed? That's its only job. You know how a traffic cop directs traffic? So that's what the thalamus does. If it's non-dangerous, it goes up here to our right brain. So what does this have to do with... Well, well, let me show you. Here, let me show you. Here's what happens to you. You go into the right brain, and this is what, this is how you see your world. It's what I call the HD part of the brain. All right? It's how you describe your world. When you come in here and describe to me all that stuff that happened in your childhood, or when you come in here and describe to me how everybody's out to get you, that's the right brain. All right? The left brain explains the world. This describes it. The left brain explains the world. Here's what happens in your brain. Here's why you stay confused. The information gets overloaded here, Ed. It gets overloaded, all right? It shuts down the ability for it to cross over into the left brain. The part of your brain that can explain everything that's going on to you literally goes offline. Does it get overloaded because something's wrong with my brain or because of my It gets overloaded past? because of your trauma in your past. It gets So that it, my trauma... Overloads your brain. Because of all I this, still have all that stuff inside me. Exactly. You've stored it. Remember the hippocampus? You've stored it. Okay, and so what has happened is when some, when this also is the present, okay, this part of the brain represents the past and the future. So when you experience something in 2013, something, it could trigger something from your past. If it looks like, smells like, tastes like, sounds like, feels like something that happened to you in your past. So that's why... And so, it, and so it overloads. The brain can't make sense of it. Can you help me? Don't I have to fix that in order to... Well, we do what we have to do. Absolutely. We have to be able to get you access to your left brain. That's what coming to counseling will do for you. We can help you get access to your left brain. Is that why you use the chair brain. stuff and things? So you, because and have me move around? We want you to move. We want both sides of your brain to come on board to be able to process okay. this. And you could do this. You spend well, sure. usually 45 minutes. Well, I, I spend about 20, 30 minutes with this. And then people can finally just not... Explain that, yeah. It depersonalizes all of their decisions that are ineffective. Because many people who have trauma histories and addiction, they're not effective decision makers. And they react to their world rather than respond. So what I do is I explain this to them so they can it can be depersonalized. Instead of thinking I'm I'm such a you know I am I am defective or I am damaged, they can think, wow, I don't have all of my brain to help me make a decision. To me, the thing that you're doing is you make it visual. Yeah. And you could explain that to me, but I guarantee you, seeing that visual images that you've created mm -hmm. up there helps my brain understand it where you could give me something to read. To read. A lot of times people, are, that's what they do. They say, Here, read, this. read this or go on this website. And, and it's also what I've done is taken the, the neuro, neurological terminology and put it into everyday language. Yeah. People know what a stop sign is. They know what a loading dock is. They know what a traffic cop well, is. And that's why I think, mm -hmm. I, I, I just think the essence of impact therapy is make your counseling visual. That's what that that that's the key. If for more information on impact therapy, go to impacttherapy.com.